everyone, welcome back to From Heroes to Icons, and today we have a little bit of a different video that I usually don't do too much, and here I just want to present to you uh, kind of a large eBay haul, but just showing you these books that um, there are upsides to eBay shop consistently and get good results sometimes uh, I feel eBay now gets such a bad name but uh, you know we all have our idiosyncrasies we want to touch the books feel the books this and that but sometimes you just can't me personally I'm just way too busy to uh, be driving around hunting and all that stuff and driving around enough and it becomes uh, quite annoying, to tell you the truth. And I'm not too much of a people person. But um, I have these books here. I don't even know how many books they are. And I think I spent around $98. And that was with shipping included. And everything was like 98 and some change. And um, I just wanted to show you what you can get. Like, What does $100 get you from eBay? Besides like a minor key or something like that. And all of these books in the background here are books that I got from eBay. And all of them are pretty good condition. And this uh, King Size Special Amazing Spider-Man is a 7. I was the first uh, graded book that I ever got. But that's neither here nor there. So I'm going to, uh, I don't even know how I should go through these books. Okay. I'm going to start from the back, I guess. I got a lot. When I say a lot, I mean a grouping of uh, Marvel Age books, just because I was feeling my age. Yeah, we got, um, I guess I should have put the other thing up there so I could stack them, but that's neither here nor there. Marvel Age 93, and, and all of these Marvel Age have to be a very fine plus to near mint. These books are like dude that I got them from and they were like nothing <laughs> super great condition and I was like oh who wants Marvel Age or whatever but you know it was like that little preview magazine they used to have back in the days and what was coming out of the comic books before time <laughs> there's some really really good stuff with these books sorry I gotta do this one at a time and a lot of these uh, the covers and the special uh, things that are in them are stuff that for people my age, you know, I was born in the 70s and collected throughout the 80s and 90s, know about, uh, you know, the little superhero grail things that happened during that time. And some of these covers is just dope. I mean, I never saw John Byrne draw the Guardians of the Galaxy from Jim Valentino's run. There you have it. Never seen him draw the Rude Warriors. There you have it. Never seen John Byrne draw the Dan Catch Ghost Rider. There you go. Really cool stuff like that. Excuse my sniffles. And uh, never collected grow, but <laughs> I always found it. Uh, you know, he's like the comical Conan. And look, it's the first Captain America movie super whack well it was dope when we watched it back in the day some of this stuff I don't even know it just came with it so hey for like 10 bucks or whatever can't complain I know I was happy to get that I was the squadron supreme fanatic Shield action going on over there. No wimps or geeks. I guess I didn't, couldn't have, have bought that book back in the days. One of my favorites right here. You never get enough of the She-Hulk. You know, and some of these, you know, back in the days, these was only 50 cents. Books are pretty thin. But the little previews and stuff that you got in them. I think there was a preview of um, 
Mobius's Silver Surfer, like a hardcore graphic novel or something. When I was collecting back in the days like that, and I was working at the movie theater, if a book was over a certain price, I just didn't buy it. I was a cheap teenager. I thought uh, quantity was better than quality. Even though the book was super dope, but I, was, I ain't paying $20 for that. You know, the stupid mind of a teenager. Another She-Hulk. You know, a lot of people didn't like uh, John Burns' tongue-in-cheek talk. I live next to an airport. A small one. But I live next to an airport. They didn't like John Burns' tongue-in-cheek uh, writing as compared to some of his uh, older stuff. But I enjoyed it. Especially for an over-serious person like me, you need a little levity in, in your life. Being humans. Another graphic novel. Super dope. Some X Men action, Havoc and Wolverine. Who's that? Elvira at the top. That's crazy. Cats are going nuts on Elvira still. Hot old chicks. What you gonna do? On a shadow line? Hmm. I have no idea what this is. I think uh, Ron Lim had a series come out from Shadow Line. And oh look, lo and behold, the Silver Surfer Volume 3 is coming out. And everybody's going crazy about books that they had never bought now, spending all types of money for books that have been in some of our collection for 25 years. That's the way the cookie crumbles, right? Punisher book coming out. Very nice. The Punisher spanking that dude. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Punish the spanker. That's funny. Let me hurry up. This thing is seven minutes already. I know you guys get tired. X Factor. And now we got uh, some Stormwatch books that I bought. I only wanted the first appearance of Backlash because I'm a Backlash fanatic and I just love Brett Booth's artwork. And this was way back in the days when he was uh, working for Jim Lee. And he's actually going to go backwards. This is issue 44. And I got uh, issue 5, which is the first appearance of Backlash. I think I have three of these now. I still haven't been able to get a 9-8 out of this. I got to buy a couple of more. Book's only like $2. But, you know, some of us still love Image. Issue number 3, covered by Jim Lee. And it's funny, some of these artists, I know Scott Clark did a lot of the um, artwork for Stormwatch. He's like gone now. I don't know if he passed away or whatever, but he's like disappeared. Stormwatch number two, another cover by Jim Lee. I thought that had a minor hiccup. And the last Stormwatch book is Stormwatch number one. A lot of these books are uh, dollar books and 50 cent books, but I love Image. And that's just what it is. Got another lot of books, um, a series by Ed Brubaker, and Steve Epting, the cats that created uh, The Winter Soldier, and this is an old school espionage book, I think it goes from like the 30s to the 60s or something like that, pretty cool book about a character called Velvet, who is uh, like a retired MI6 type of agent, a woman bond, and she's a secretary, and nobody knows that she used to be, like, a secret agent, until they try to frame her, and then she starts killing people, <laughs> to find answers, it's pretty dope, I got a lot, and it's like, um, this trade paper back here, which is the first storyline, plus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten books, for like super cheap, like the guy was uh, selling it for like $10 or something like that. And I asked him, would he sell it for like 7 <laughs> And he did with the shipping, so it only came out to like $10 total or something like that, ten ninety, something silly. And, um, these uh, covers should be like movie posters or something like that, really, really nice. 
It's issue number one. It's not the whole thing. I got the entire series. I just wanted some reader copies myself. Already got a 9.8 in this one. It's not graded, but I know it's a 9.8. And don't need to be pressed in that book. is beautiful. It's number one. It jumps to number six. And a lot of these either have all black or all white to off-white covers. So, you know, some of them, these reader copies here, they got a few minor spine ticks or whatever. Some break color, some don't. And some are actually in extremely good condition, very fine plus. Number seven. Really like that guy. It looks like James Colburn from back in the days. You guys like Metal Rock or whatever. No. <laughs> Who know James Colbert, know what I'm talking about. Did his own stunts and all that back in the days. Number eight. Really, really nice looking book. Really deep story too. And it's um mature readers, obviously, you know. A lot of killing, adult language, adult situations and such. You know, it's a spy book. You know. James Bond was uh 50-something-year-old chick that was retired, it would be Velvet. Really, really nice. Let me run through this. Lagging again. So, it's number 10. Another white cover. Number 11. Uh, I guess uh, Thanatos and the rest of those cats would be like them legs, right? Who thought Steve F. could draw like that? I did. Number 12, she loved that gun. I don't know what that gun is. I don't know that's one of those uh, specialized German joints. Pretty dope. We got number 14 there. I love that cover with the unfinished lines here. It's really awesome because there's so much detail in her face and then like the detail just washes out and then the gun in her hand is extremely detailed. Yeah, that guy's spine ticks too. Glad I already got a 9 8 in that. And the last one is issue 15. Beautiful profile of Velvet by Steve Epting. And uh, another series. No, I'll do that last. And uh, I got a couple of other books. You know, seeing that on the cheap. I had to get that. And what was so crazy about this book, I had ordered a few of these books all on the same day. And this X-Men right here, which, you know, you got to love the Triple Gate full cover and the Jim Lee art and all of that. This book came from Honolulu. <laughs> and it beat some books that I had bought before it to my house. It was crazy. And they actually had it in like, um, you know, it was wrapped in a box, but the box was inside of. It looked like a Hawaiian gift wrap thing. It was crazy. <laughs> and this book actually uh, made it to my house before all the other ones. It's insane. And um, keeping up with my image stuff. I was looking for a hardcore another 9-8 of this. Wildcats number 10 by Jim Lee and Chris Claremont. And I put this book up for, it was like first appearance Friday, somebody asked me. And, you know, you put the uh, hashtags and stuff. And Chris Claremont actually commented on my post on Instagram. <laughs> it was it was kind of cool, you know, when you actually have a professional just um, comment on your post like that. It was pretty dope. This is a character he was proud of that people don't even talk about anymore. But that was the Huntsman's first appearance. I also got to go through these books here. Star Brand number one. I think I got that for 99 cents. And I, that, again, looking for another 9, 8 and something, but I got two color breaking spine ticks, so I guess that'll knock it down to a 7 or something. I don't know how to grade. But always love the Star Brand. And another appearance of Frankie Ray. Fantastic Four 238. This is an uh, eh, 
very fine minus condition. But again, another steal. I think I got it for two dollars or something. And um, the series that I've been looking at to grab these four books for a minute. But um, after Curse of the White Knight came out, I was like, eh, might as well grab it real quick. And all of these are super duper 9 8 material, 9 9 material, the sword of Azrael. And um, I was like, oof, 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 oof. Glad I got these. Man, when I took them out the bag and board that they came in. Pretty, 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 pretty. Number two. And yes, I rebagged and bought all of these because these are straight for the personal collection. These ain't going nowhere. And um, this was done by Denny O'Neill and Joe Casada before he went over to Marvel. Issue number three, and uh, with this because I know it, I know it looked good on camera. Shout out to. Uh, comics with Bueller because these uh, bags and boards that I got are the uh, Mac. Once again, y'all gonna have to excuse me. Um, phone is only taking eight minute clip videos and then it's cutting me off. Apparently I was running out of space. But um, shout out to Comics with Bueller for these lovely comic book bags and boards. And they are magnificent. They look Almost just as good as a Mylar. And they work better. Dare I say better. Than the. Um, bags and boards. From uh, BCW. They really do. And they don't wrinkle. You know, all of that other type of stuff real quick. Sort of Azrael. Number four. Love all of this. That Joe Casada did. With his blacks. And the negative space. And all of that. Really awesome. Batman is thick, ain't he? Chubsy wubsy over there a little bit. So we're going to run through this before my phone cuts me off again. <laughs> For those that are still watching. And, um, one set of books left, and this is uh, an Image Comics book by uh, Rick Remenda and Matteo Scalera. That is Black Science. These books are super mint. Each uh, book the back of it is white, and uh, there are uh, no spine ticks, no fingerprints, nothing. I don't even think the guy read these books or anything, or if it came from a comic shop or whatever. But um, grab these for a deal. I think it was the first nine issues, and they are magnificent. And I think what catches your eye is a lot of the um, cover work. I know number one had like seven different variants. I believe this is cover A. A lot of the covers are very reminiscent of the fantasy and sci-fi magazines that came out that was Frank Frazetta did. You know, you had a lot of those weird uh, pretty ladies and all that. Frog with a banging body. What you gonna do? Issue number two. And uh, I like the way they cross like the severe science fiction with like this weird fantasy reality thing. It's a really dope book. Only read issue one so far, but it's um you know, you gotta have a taste for the science fiction and the bizarre. But really, really good stuff. And the uh the design of the covers, how the picture doesn't take up the entire space. It's really different. And they have like the white bar the logo, the insignia where they put the name, and then it's just the artwork on one third of the right page. Really, really good stuff. I wish I could show you the back. I'm not opening these though. Uh, one for my boys, even though it's just a silhouette and panties, them legs, issue number four. Yeah, my man smoking a stogie. Good stuff. Or minus something on it. Yeah. Chase that out for the price. Number five. 
really, really sick. And it seemed like from every little bit of science fiction that was out there, they took something from They got these white apes that they fighting or whatever. I know that was from something back in the days. Might have been the um, time machine. That's it. Good stuff. Issue number six. Type action there, the electrodes and stuff. You see how the uh, bottom science and the image logo corresponds with a lot of the uh, color. On it. Issue number seven, two more. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. And uh, to me, this was a a steal, showing you uh, what you can get. The bargains that you can get and the quality of books that you can get for a good price on eBay. And um, I have to say the only book that uh, there's only one uh, package of shame, as uh, Comic Vantage says. Number eight, got the little praying mantis there. There was only one book that actually came like horrible. And it wasn't, you know, tattered or anything like that. The book was in still good condition. But definitely um, only one bad package. And issue number nine. I hope I haven't worn you guys' patience too much. But I just wanted to show you that, um, you know, when you're striking out looking to get books on eBay, that you will definitely find bargains. You will definitely find books that are worth their weight. Not in gold, in paper rings. <laughs> so until next time, I'll see you at the same bad time and at the same bad channel. Peace. Well, you know, there's always some type of weird mistake. And I also got this power pack number one with that group for less than $100. All right, y'all. Later.